Hello, this is Dr. Gay, and I want to talk to you about how to read an MRI of the lumbar spine. This is one of the most commonly ordered scans we do, and I like to start with a view where we look straight at the patient here, and this is called a coronal image. And on the coronal image, the patient is facing you, it looks like, and on this big field of view, you see lots of anatomy, and just look for anything that is wrong. Here's the right kidney, see if that's normal in size, equal in size to the left kidney, it looks like a bean here. Make sure there's no renal tumor, no cyst. There's no obstruction, so these kidneys look normal. These are called the psoas muscles, these areas that are dark coming off the spine. Here's the right side, left side. You can see the vertebral bodies here and make sure there's no abnormality within the vertebral bodies. And also on this view, you can see the curvature. If patients have scoliosis, that means the spine will twist towards the left or to the right. And this patient has almost a perfectly straight curvature, maybe some little bit of levoconvex or leftward convex scoliosis, but it's so minimal, not worth mentioning. Also, we look down low. Sometimes you can see into the pelvis to make sure there's not a pelvic mass or cyst or any other abnormality. And on this view, we can see the sacrum. So this is the sacrum right here. This is the right side, left side, and the sacrum has the sacroiliac joint. So on this side is the sacrum, on this side is the ilium. And this is the SI joint, looks normal. And this side looks normal. There's no evidence of sacroiliitis, and there's no evidence of a sacral stress fracture, no evidence of a bone tumor. So have a big view, look around, make sure there's nothing going on. Then we switch over to a side view. Now the side view is called a sagittal view. And on the sagittal view, we can see the vertebral bodies in profile. So this is the very back of the patient. This is the table they lay on off to the back here. And this bright band is normal subcutaneous fat. These areas are called the spinous processes back here. Oops, and uh, these are the vertebral bodies. Here's the top lumbar vertebral body, L1 two, three, four, five. So five lumbar vertebral bodies are present. And then above the lumbar spine is the thoracic spine. They look very similar. Uh, and then down below, it looks different. This is the sacrum down here. Now within the spinal canal here, we see a dark area. This is the spinal cord that comes down and ends about right here. And then it gives off little nerves. They come down like spaghetti. And the nerves come off at each one of these disc levels, there's a hole on the right side called a foramen. And within the frame, you see a single nerve passing through there on the right. If we roll off to the left-hand side, you see another single nerve going through the foramen. So our job is to look centrally. Is the spinal canal filled with this white fluid open? And do the nerves look normal? Are there little tumors in there or any abnormality? And they look normal in this patient. If we roll off to the right-hand side, we look at the holes of the foramina, see if they're open. And then do the same thing on the left-hand side. Roll back across there and see if they're open. Now this patient does have some narrowing at one level. At the very bottom level down here, we see this is called L5, S1. We can see that there is a disc protrusion at the level above this, L45, and then at L5, S1, another little protrusion. The other thing we note is that fluid is really white on this, and discs should have a fair amount of fluid, so they should be bright. So this is a normal disc, bright, Nice normal disc, nice and tall, bright. These are all good except for these last two. See how dark that is? See how dark this is? So that means they've lost some of their water content and they're desiccated. We call that disc desiccation. Lost their water. It's a sign of wear and tear or the early sign of degeneration. And in this patient, both of those discs have little white areas associated with them. And so these little white areas are called annular fissures. And right here is one of them. And on this other side, there's another one right here. So the annulus fibrosis is around the edge. It holds the disc material in. And sometimes it can have a little tear or a rent. And it can be really bright like this. Supposedly they can be associated with pain. But um, it's still holding on. The disc material is not spilled out. So the disc protrusion with an annular fissure. And you can see the spinal canal is nice and wide open. If we roll again to the left. I'm sorry, the right, now off to the left, the foramina are looking pretty good. Now this bottom level, L5, S1, there's a disc abnormality here. It's a broad central protruding disc, or bulging or protruding disc. Roll off to the right, the hole looks pretty good, the foramen. If we roll off to the left, however, we see that the nerve is um, getting pushed on a little bit. So the nerve is not round anymore. Here this one is round. There's fat around it. There's room for it to go through. This one, it looks like it's getting pushed on by this bony spur and a little bit of disc material. It's getting compressed a little bit. So I call this 
moderate narrowing of the left foramen in pushing on this nerve that goes down to the left lower leg or foot here. And there's one other finding here. I'm going to put up another view. We look at another orientation besides the first one and besides this one where we go right through each one of the discs. So this is the orientation. So we will start above the disc and go down through it on, it's called an axial image. So this is an axial image just above the disc level. This is the very bottom of the L4 vertebral body. And behind that we see the spinal canal filled with white fluid. And you see these little things, these are the individual nerves that are going through the spinal canal. And they come out and they exit through these little holes. These are the foramina. And that's a nerve in the right foramen. Here's a nerve in the left foramen. And if we come down, 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 these nerves have exited just fine. Here they're on the outside. We see one more thing. Here's the central canal. We see the right called lateral recess. There's a little area over here where the nerve goes out and it's getting ready to come down at the other level below this one. And so the nerves are positioned in this right lateral recess here. You can see how the fluid has a little uh, opening over here, or the canal has a little opening over here, and the nerve is right there. Now on the left-hand side, the left lateral recess is narrow. There's a central disc protrusion, and it also goes into the left area over here, the left preframal space, and it causes narrowing and pinching of this nerve. So imagine this should be a little gap here where the nerve can fit nicely in there. And on this side, you don't really see a gap there. You just see the disc material going right over to it and a little dark area. So this is a left lateral recess stenosis, and it's pushing on this nerve called the left L5 nerve root. So that is it. We see the central canal. We look at the, here's the central canal. We look at the neural foramina, and we also look at these lateral recesses, which again are best seen on the axial images like this. So that is how I look at the lumbar spine MRI. Hopefully that was helpful, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching.